Hi, I am Divya Jyoti Das and this is for the love of physics and uh, here today we are going to discuss a problem of relativity which involves particle decay. Okay, so this is a question that came in net physical sciences examination and it goes something like this. Consider a decay process which involves a tau particle decays into a pi meson and a neutrino in the rest frame of the tau particle. The masses of the tau, pi meson and the neutrino are given by m tau, m pi, m neutrino where m neutrino is near approximately zero. What is the energy of the pion particle in terms of the masses of the other particles? Now this is a very standard question in relativity where uh, you will have some kind of a particle interaction, interaction of subatomic particles, decays of particles, where you will require to obtain the velocity of a particle or the momentum of a particle or energy of a particle based on the parameters of the other particles. Now, many students I have seen struggle with questions like these, but these questions are not very difficult. And if we correctly apply the conservation laws of momentum, the conservation of laws of energy and the expressions of relativistic energy and relativistic momentum, we can figure out a way of solving problems like these. So if you have struggled with questions like these, then maybe this particular question can shed some light into how to approach questions like these. Okay, the question is very simple. The only difference is that it's a relativistic phenomena and relativistic phenomena means that energy is a relativistic energy, momentum is relativistic momentum, mass is also relativistic. So therefore we can only conserve the relativistic momentum and relativistic energy and therefore we will need to apply the equations associated with those. If we know how to do that, we can solve this problem. So a tau particle decays into a pi meson and a neutrino. Now usually we consider in various questions for the mass of a neutrino to be approximately equal to zero. Now, it is not exactly equal to zero. As it turns out, neutrinos do seem to have some mass, but it is extremely, extremely negligible. In fact, it is so, so small that currently we don't even know what that mass is. <laughs> at least in this, uh, at this particular point in our civilization, we have not yet figured out what is the exact mass of a neutrino but we do know that it is extremely extremely minute and for the sake of calculations we can approximate it to be zero these are the quantities for the momentum and the relativistic energy for these particles so since this is a decay process in the rest frame of the tau particle so originally there was a tau particle it suddenly decayed into two separate particles a pi meson and a neutrino so what can we do here well we can apply the conservation of linear momentum if we consider relativistic momentum and we can apply the conservation of relativistic energy and applying that we can actually solve this problem all right so let's first apply the conservation of relativistic momentum in the rest frame of the tau particle so all the calculations will be in the rest frame of the tau particle so originally the tau particle is at rest and it suddenly decays into a pi meson and a neutrino so in the rest frame of the tau particle conservation of uh, relativistic uh, momentum gives us that the momentum of the pi meson and the momentum of the neutrino are exactly equal. Yes. The momentum of the pi meson is exactly equal to momentum of the neutrino. That's it. Right. Now, how does that benefit us? Well, we'll keep it as point number one. Okay. We'll keep it as point number one and we'll see how it helps. Second of all, we can apply conservation of energy. All right, so conservation of energy or relativistic energy basically tells us that the total energy of the tau particle, all right, is equal to the total energy of the pi meson plus the total energy of the neutrino. All right, so let's suppose that this is point number two. However, one thing we need to keep in mind that the total energy of any object in relativity uh, the object may be in motion and the object may have some kind of a rest mass is usually given uh, by this particular expression. So the relativistic energy of any particle E is equal to m naught square c to the power 4 plus p square c square root over. 
okay so this is a general expression for the relativistic energy of any particle having rest mass m0 that is the mass it has when it is at rest and its relativistic momentum p where c there is a speed of light now we are interested in finding out what is the energy of the pi one in terms of the masses of the other so in a way we need to cancel out the other uh, you know energy of tau particle energy of neutrinos and just substitute uh, an expression which involves only the masses of the particles so for that let us look at first what is the energy of the pi one okay so for the for the pi one particle or the pi meson the energy of e pi what is that well according to this particular expression the energy of the pi on is nothing but the rest mass of the pi on m pi square c square plus p pi on p square c square that is it i can come up with some uh, rearrangement here so if i say e pi square is equal to m pi square c square plus p pi square c square which i can rewrite as p pi c is equal to e pi square minus m pi square c square root over okay let us say that this is point number 3 okay so i'll consider this as point number 3 now let us apply this energy conservation expression that we have here which is e tau is equal to e pi plus e nu now what about the neutrino well as i already said the neutrinos are massless approximately so i'm going to consider the neutrinos to have zero rest mass if i do that then according to the same expression basically according to the same expression if rest mass of a particle is zero then e is equal to pc yes so if the neutrino has rest mass if i say e neutrino is equal to it has a rest mass of zero then it simply turns out to be p nu c right so for a neutrino or any particle that we can consider as having rest mass zero then e nu is equal to p nu c so that means i can substitute this expression here all right so instead of e nu i am going to call this as p nu c now here comes point number 1 so p nu is nothing but p pi so the momentum of the neutrino is the same as the momentum of the pi on particle so if i apply this expression here then what do i get well p nu can be substituted with p pi you see it's becoming simpler now all right now what do will i do now <laughs> well now i'm going to replace p pi c in this particular term shall we do that let's do it okay so p pi c is equal to e tau minus e pi now what is e tau e tau is the energy of the original parent particle which is a tau particle now originally the parent particle is in the rest frame of reference that means it has a rest mass but its momentum is zero you see if it has a rest mass but momentum is zero so in that situation the energy of the tau particle e tau is simply equal to m tau c square that's it because the momentum is zero the p is zero for the tau particle therefore only the first term remains so the energy of the tau particle is equal to m tau c square in the rest frame of the tau particle right so this if i substitute it here it simply becomes m tau c square minus e pi right and then in the left hand side p pi c this is point number 3 this simply gives us e pi square minus m pi square c square but there is a root over term here so what i can do is i can square the right hand side all right so if i do this then this simply becomes e pi square minus m pi square i think this should be i made a mistake guys <laughs> i made a simple mistake this was supposed to be c to the power 4 right this was supposed to be c to the power 4 it happens sometimes you know when you are doing calculations this was supposed to be c to the power 4 so this was supposed to be c to the power 4 and c to the power 4 so now in the right hand side i have m tau square c to the power 4 plus e pi square minus twice m tau c square e pi now all we have to do is simplify these expressions by cancelling e pi square in the left and the right hand sides 
and finally we end up getting if i bring this to the left hand side twice m tau c square e pi is equal to m tau square c to the power 4 plus m pi square c to the power 4. So I can simplify the whole thing by saying that I can take the c to the power 4 term outside. All right. If I take the c to the power 4 term outside or rather I can cancel out c square and this will become c square. Yes, this will become c square. So I can take the c square term out of the bracket. So I can write m pi tau square plus m pi square. multiplied by c square and then I can take these two terms twice m tau to the right hand side okay so I can take the m tau to the right hand side so this becomes upon twice m tau so this is the energy of the pi on particle so the energy of the pi on particle in terms of the masses of the tau and the pi on particle are given as m tau square plus m pi square c square upon twice m tau so this is the answer to this particular question. Now what I hope that I have demonstrated is questions which are similar to this. In uh, various competitive examinations, they are going to ask you something similar to this kind of a question where they may give you some kind of a particle decay and they may ask you to find out the velocity or the energy or the mass of any one of the particles. So what you can do is you can apply relativistic moment, relativistic energy, conservation of momentum, conservation of energy and the concept of massless particles and perform the necessary substitution in uh, these equations to come up with the answer that is necessary. So that is all for today. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.